Is she really going out with him? Yeah, I don't know. I just sort of feel like I'm on drugs when I'm with you. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movie characters with girls way out of their league. Oh, honey bunny. Oh, love cap. Oh, Roger. For this list, we're looking at the most unbelievable movie examples of men who are married to or dating women that are more attractive, successful, or sophisticated than they are. It's okay. I can get used to it. <laughs> really? Couples featuring monsters were not up for consideration, so Hellboy and Liz Sherman could not make the cut. I'll never give up on you. Ever. I like that. We will be talking about the plots for all of these movies, so this is your spoiler alert. Number 10, Stanley Ipkiss and Tina Carlisle, The Mask. Are you okay? Me? I'm great, really good. Stanley, as we are first introduced to him, is an unassuming guy. It's, it's a power tone. It's supposed to make you feel powerful. Tina, as we are first introduced to her, in a sexy red dress slowly coming out of the rain, is awe-inspiring. Hold the phone. Killer at 3 o'clock. Serving her as a bank teller, he seems to amuse her with his tie antics. But things between two people like them would typically have ended there if it weren't for a power-imbuing mask. If deep down inside you're a little repressed and a hopeless romantic, you become some sort of a love-crazy wild man. Saving her from her evil boyfriend, the gangster Dorian Tyrell, amid other antics like singing Cuban Pete. They call me Cuban Pete. I'm the king of a rumba beat. Stanley becomes a hero. And luckily for him, Tina's hero too. It's you all along. Number 9, Jamal Malik and Latika, Slumdog Millionaire. A movie couple portrayed by actors who dated in real life for six years following their on-screen matchup. There is an obvious discrepancy between each of their attractiveness. This is our destiny. By no means are we saying that Dev Patel is an ugly man. And in fact, a quick Google search easily reveals that he cleans up quite nicely. But Frida Pinto is the type of woman you write songs about. A beautiful woman who screams class, or more likely softly speaks it, not to mention a former model. Pinto and Patel did a great job in the movie setting up years of backstory that made their union make a lot more sense, but still. I knew you'd be watching. I thought we'd meet again only in death. Number eight. Kirk Kettner and Molly McLeish, she's out of my league. Uh, I'm a five. This, this is a five. Hard five. We mean, come on. This movie is called She's Out of My League. Uh, that's because I didn't think I stood a chance in hell, but now that she's asked me out, I, I, I don't get it. It boggles my mind. Why? As a TSA agent who has the dignity to treat the magnificently exquisite Molly as just a woman, it's Kirk's humanity that makes him memorable. Meanwhile, it's her forgotten cell phone that brings them together. Hello, thank God you have my phone. My name is Molly McLeish. Funny and holy himself, Kirk manages to win Molly over despite being vastly dumpier. In the end, they seem to live happily ever after. I missed you. And I just want us to be together. As cute as they are together, the scene where Molly begins to undress in front of him underlines just how much of a mismatch they are. Oh, my gosh. Number 7. Albert Brenneman and Allegra Cole, Hitch. We should be taking advice from you, Miss Cole. Not the other way around. Sit down, Miss No, you know what? I quit! Kevin James has pulled off a lengthy career in show business, gaining a number of fans that enjoy his comedy stylings. The receptive nature of the creative facility just astounds me. Ooh, anybody want any spring rolls? Some of those people may chomp at the bit to share a meal or a bed with him, but he likely would have no chance with the dazzling Allegra Cole of Hitch in real life, or Amy Anderson, the object of his affections in Paul Blart. Hey, can I give you a lift? <laughs> what on that? In the former flick, he's a pupil of Will Smith's smooth character. I know, oh, take that chance, 
and the way he's taught to be more confident and charming by his mentor is the mitigating factor that stopped us from putting the high-profile and much more attractive Allegra and awkward Albert's coupling higher on this list. Look at her, she looks so happy. How does a guy like that end up with a girl like her? Oh, oh, oh. Number six, Louis Skolnick and Betty Childs, Revenge of the Nerds. The nerd saw me naked. Oh, get out! Oh, get out! The ultimate jocks versus nerds movie, Revenge of the Nerds, as the title only slightly gives away, sees the nerds getting the upper hand. You're that nerd. Yeah. Oh God, you are wonderful. What may come as more of a shock if you didn't already know the whole point of this list is the fact that one of the star nerds manages to get a jocks girl. Are all nerds as good as you? Yes. How come? Because all jocks think about is sports. All we ever think about is sex. We're not going to get into what initially brings Lewis and cheerleader Betty together. Let's just say you definitely couldn't get away with it in a comedy today. Hi, Betty. <laughs> Against all probability, this beauty still falls for this geek. God, I'm in love with a nerd. <laughs> Number five, Sam Witwicky and Michaela Baines, the Transformers franchise. When you combine the directing style of Michael Bay and the way he shoots good-looking women, it's no wonder Megan Fox's mechanical skills look amazing. That was really awesome. Then you have the bumbling, awkward-looking Shia LaBeouf in the same scene, and the idea that they'd become a couple seems ridiculous. It took all this for you to tell me that you love me. You said it first. It shouldn't come as a major surprise that they break up after the second movie. But then Sam manages to somehow land Rosie Huntington Whiteley's Carly in Dark of the Moon. You're the only thing I need in this world, not do anything to make it up to you, I promise. I'm gonna hold you to that. While that pairing is also inexplicable, Michaela seems even less attainable for a guy like Sam. You're like the best thing that ever happened to me. And? And I'll do anything for you. Number four, Seth and Jules, super bad. You scratch our backs, we'll scratch yours. Jonah Hill is a talented actor with two Oscar nominations under his belt and some real comedy chops. But what he isn't, especially at the time of this movie, is a classically handsome man. It's not like a big deal. Wow. It's cool, but you guys have like four more years to cuddle. Meanwhile, Emma Stone is a talented actress with an Oscar nomination under her belt and some real comedy chops, who was and remains an absolute stunner. There's no other... Time, school's up. What's wrong with right now? Well, I mean, you're... you're drunk. Although we like to think that personality is king, the fact of the matter is, Seth is a dick in a lot of ways throughout Superbad, on top of the obvious looks disparity between the two. You know when you hear a girl saying, like, ah, oh, I was so shit-faced last night, I shouldn't have f***ed that guy. We could be that mistake! So, unsurprisingly, many people, us included, were left scratching our heads. You know what? I'm actually good right now. Thank you. Number three, Detective Alan Gator Gamble and Dr. Sheila Ramos Gamble, the other guys. Who are you? I'm Dr. Sheila Gamble, his wife. Come on, seriously, who is that? This hilarious film may not have gotten the credit it deserves, and the way that Alan Gamble's love life is played for laughs is a testament to that. Oh, baby, where are you? I want to see you. I'm near the place where we did it three Halloweens ago, do you remember? As a down-on-his-luck laughing stock of a detective with a gorgeous doctor of a wife played by Eva Mendez, his partner can't believe he got her, and neither can we. Why are you with Alan? I mean, that, that's not what I meant. I meant, um, how did you guys meet? While it's true that the way they interact with one another makes them seem like a fantastic couple, that doesn't make their relationship any less fantastical. I'm about to do you grandpa style. Number two, Billy Madison and Veronica Vaughn, Billy Madison. So what's it like being back in school? Adam Sandler has the reputation of being a guy who makes movies to spend time in vacation destinations with his friends. But it appears that he also does it to be with famous beauties. Michael, it's been... I'm really confused. No, 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 I'll change, okay? Whether it's Kate Beckinsale or Salma Hayek, the guys seem to have it figured out. Sorry about that. Damn guy drives like an animal. Huh? That's all right, Billy. Why don't you go back and sit down now? For our money, though, his breakout film performance in Billy Madison takes the cake, as does his character's love interest, 
with his one-time teacher Veronica and her specialized studying method making a lot of fans want to go back to school. So, it's um the last day of third grade mm. and you have the teacher alone in your tent. What do you want to do? Before we reveal our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. I had the market send over some salt mackerel for you. I know how you love it for breakfast. Some sweet kid. Nobody really thinks it will work, do they? No. We just described every great success story. What do you do for the recreation? Oh, the usual. Ball, drive around, the occasional acid flashback. You make me want to be a better man. What could she possibly be worried about? That I'll end up like my mom, working the day shift here and raising three kids by myself. I didn't know all that. Number one, Ben Stone and Allison Scott knocked up. Obviously, I was drunk. Was your vagina drunk? Seth Rogen is an unlikely leading man, but that hasn't stopped him from becoming involved with incredible beauties like Amber Heard in Pineapple Express or Elizabeth Banks in Zack and Miri. I don't want you getting all mushy and gooey on me after I give you the best orgasm you've ever had in your life. In our eyes, his most impressive on-screen conquest has to be Allison Scott, played by Katherine Heigl in Knocked Up. I love your curly hair. <laughs> no, that's, uh, I use a Jew, it's called. Look at you. After what was meant to be a one-night stand, Ben and Allison become more involved once she reveals she is pregnant. I'm pregnant. F off. What? What? I'm pregnant? With emotion? With a baby. Although it is a baby that transforms them from a drunken mistake to apartment-sharing lovers. This ain't the 1950s, so there's little question they chose to be together, despite their differences. Don't tell mommy. It was the smartest thing I ever did listening to her, because now you're here. Isn't that nice? Do you agree with our list? What other movie characters scored chicks way out of their league? For more entertaining top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to Ms. Mojo. Come on, you didn't blow it. I think maybe. What the f? Help me.